who is the beginner boost for? Um, this this is going to be a really fast video. The beginner boost is basically for anybody who is just starting out in tech, um, and and that's the primary target audience is is those who are trying to start out in tech, whether it's a tech career or they're retired and they've always wanted to learn something in tech. They've had all kinds. Uh, that's who the beginner boost is for. Um, it that includes uh, people who have been in technology for a long time, but maybe feel like they missed some of the fundamentals and they want to go back. Uh, that includes, you know, front end people. I've been kind of ranting about front end lately because it seems like the whole world cares nothing more than about front end when in fact, you know, the core computer, uh, fundamentals are being ignored. So, you know, maybe you want to learn back end or something and you want to do that. So that would be for those people. Uh, and, and that's pretty much covers it. So it's, it's, and it's honestly, it's for anybody who wants to learn about Linux, uh, containers and coding. And those are the primary thing. And of course, learning how to learn and the scientific method and all of that kind of stuff that goes with it. Those are all fundamentals that um, that are listed. And if you go to the Boost uh, links, you can read, there's links here. Uh, so I, I do want to, to back up a little bit and say, read about the prerequisites. Um, so what are the prerequisites? Um, uh, I'll pull this back up from here just so it's easier. I, I want to, you know what, let me zoom this in. Let me zoom this in. So I'm going to, I'm going to use the same things that you guys are probably going to do. I could do it from the terminal, but I would just as soon do it this way so that you guys uh, know where to click and stuff. So it's the same as this is again, this is on our uh, github.com rdbx uh, rob slash boost uh, the prerequisites. So the prerequisites. Yeah. I mean, the, the prerequisites are pretty basic. Uh, before you begin, make sure you know these tech things. You should be able to uh, speak and write basic English. I speak pretty quickly. If that's not you, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I didn't make the rules. <laughs> you know, <laughs> damn those English, right? With their Navy. They made the whole world speak English instead of Dutch or whatever, right? So you got to speak English. Algebraic functions. If you don't know how to do basic algebra, uh, some of the stuff that we're doing is going to be harder for you. Uh, my son and I actually discovered over dinner one night while we were really wondering why, what was so hard for people to learn coding, what was the distinction, and we dealt with young people a lot, and we came to agree that those who had had exposure to math first uh, had a much easier time learning how to code in general. And so if you've done math, algebra, algebraic functions, if you, if you're, if you haven't done any, you know, that's the thing you might want to focus on. Um, in fact, one case, there was a 10 year old who had taught himself, uh, math uh, way ahead of the curve. I mean, he should have had to have been, you know, 12 or 14 to be able to do that. So spend some time in math class, make sure you get what functions do. In fact, many terms, uh, strictly speaking, computer science is an extension of mathematics. And so, Pay attention, and that stuff will help you out. Uh, you should be able to type 30 words from home row, and uh, I don't want to skip over this particular point. I do want to give you, uh, without going too long, I want to give you a few places you can go to practice your typing. A lot of people will be able to help each other out uh, with this, but uh, Nitro Type is actually a really popular one. I have nothing, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have anything to do with these people, uh, but, uh, and, Nitro type is one of the places you can go. Uh, there's the typing test, uh, typing.com. I mean, there's just a million places you can go to type. There's actually, there's like typing games for people who want to learn how to code. And actually on my wish list, which is on github slash com rwx rob, uh, I'm going to plug my wish list here. If you go to slash wish, uh, I have a number of wishes here. And one of my wishes uh, is so if you had a code already and you're just watching this for fun, <laughs> God help you if you are. But if you are, one of my wishes is a terminal typing training game. So uh, all the web tools are lame, <laughs> even though it's designed for coding suck. Uh, they need to be an exciting terminal typing training tool that allows. So if you want to make one, that's good. But but just typing on the terminal and writing is going to be be your mo your best practice because all the coding symbols are on the top row. I still can't hit them as well as I should be able to. Um, so typing is a thing that you have to know. There's just no denying that. Um, and then and from home row, by the way, none of this hunt and peck. If you're hunting and pecking, that's fine. I actually saw a kid. This is this is a true story. It's a fun story. I saw I saw a guy that I was was teaching. He this is how he typed. He was like fully home row from this hand and this hand was this. And I was like, 
how how did that turn out to be? Turned out he was a gamer. And he had really great dexterity in his left hand because he had been doing, you know, WASD for all of his games of Minecraft and stuff, but he had never it developed his right hand home row typing. This is literally, and you should have seen how fast he was. He was, on this, he was, it's the craziest thing. Anyway, um, so, uh, wait, keyboard.com. Oh, we have another, another recommendation here. Let's go look at this one. Uh, yeah, let's go look at that one for sure. Yeah, learn to type faster. Here's another one. Let's go look at this one. Uh, web application to learn to type. Ooh, look at this. this. I didn't know about this. This is why this is so great having a studio audience. Um, and somebody else said monkeytype.com. That's it. Looks that was fun too. So monkey type. This is this is one of the greatest things about doing this in this way because so many people bring t- things to the table that I that I don't even know about. So there's two more things you can try. All right. Back to the requirement. I don't. I'm, I don't want to run over my time. Uh, somebody else got another suggestion. Keyword helped me a lot. Nice guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, so own a computer with admin access. I have to put this because I've taught private school before, and uh, I've had people like delay the whole class like two days because they didn't have admin access to their system to put whatever on there. And that at the time it was VS code that we were using and they couldn't put it on there. So you have to have a computer and you should have admin access on it. You're going to need to install Docker and a bunch of other stuff. And if you don't know how to do that, or you don't know what that is, stop right now or for your homework for the next 24 hours is to figure out how to do that. You, you, you got to have this. You can't do any of what we're going to do without actual access to your computer. Uh, if you're, if your mom or dad need justification, say, Mr. Rob told me I needed to do it. And by the way, don't use your mom's or dad's computer. The Docker containers are going to save us from a lot of mishaps, but it's probably better for you to have a computer that, uh, that, you know, if you do something wrong, no one's going to die. Right. Um, and I mean, some people, I mean, some parents would get really bent out of shape. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. You're sending words per minute. Awesome. So um, you need to know how to manage your own pos- passwords responsibly. And I am not going to spend a, a lot of time talking about this. I've done other videos on this. Uh, people ask me what my method for managing my password is. And I'm just going to tell you, and I'm not going to say anything else about it. I use KeePass XC, but it is rather a complicated password manager for me. Uh, their sessions are recorded. Yes. So uh, KeePassXC.org. This is it. So... Uh, this is my preferred password manager. Everybody's got an opinion on this. Uh, I, I, I don't have anything negative to say about other people's choices, except for be sure they haven't been hacked. Uh, there are a couple password manager sites that have been massively hacked. I won't say who, <laughs> but uh, I, I fundamentally disagree with, with storing passwords on any cloud service at all, even though a lot of businesses depend on that. Um, I don't. I, I have my passwords are on a USB stick, and I use a a UB key for that. But that's probably going too far for today. Um, if you want to do that, yep, there you go. So, um, but honestly, a pa- a book, a notebook, a notebook, and a piece of pen, uh, a paper, you know, a piece of paper and a pencil is fine. Just be responsible. And learn and remember your passwords. The one th- I almost made a whole system just for that. For that one thing. Because nobody could remember their passwords. The skill stack over eight years. Every single time. I'd have adults. I had I had a, a 18 year old forget his Linux login password. Had to re-image his whole computer. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Be responsible. The most important thing that you need to learn in terms of technical responsibility is going to be maintaining your passwords. The one thing that makes you look like a fool more than anything else in the technical realm is having to forget your password or your pin or something. So create a strategy for this. And I'm assuming you have that strategy in place. I'm not going to help you with that. If you forget it, you know, tough beans, you just need to create a system for yourself that you, and I'm not going to tell you what to do. Everybody's got a different system. You come up with your own system, and if you guys want to collaborate in the chat or in the Discord and ask each other what they like, and this one or that one, that's fine. But just do it, <laughs> okay? Because we're not going to deal with that. Uh, you need to... Uh, by the way, the best password is a long password, not a complicated password, okay? Let me say it again. The best password is a long password, not a crazy password. 
like a sentence that you'll remember where you may have swapped out some of the letters for numbers. That is the safest password possible. It's counterintuitive, but this most best, the most best password is not limiting it to eight characters and making them all wacky, weird things you can't remember. It's actually not safe to do that. It's safer to make a long passphrase, which is the preferred term I like, uh, that you can remember that's got, that's got stuff in it. Okay. And, and use a different one every place you go. So search bookmarks, uh, and browse the web. I mean, this goes without saying, if you're here already, you already know how to search bookmark and browse the web. It's possible that some people are coming, they're watching this on their parents' YouTube or something like that, and they don't really know how to browse the web yet. Uh, I've dealt with people as young as eight or nine years old who they're just watching videos on an iPad. So if that's you, uh, if that describes you, then you're, you're probably a little young for this particular session, but that's fine as long as you know how to search the web, uh, bookmark it, and browse it. And I'm not going to go into detail. I am going to tell you the search engines that I use. I use DuckDuckGo for searching. Uh, DuckDuckGo.com, which is not as good as the searching, but it's it's not Google. Uh, and sometimes I'll go ahead and use Google. And you'll see me using this a lot of times from the terminal as well. So that's what I do for searching. Uh, people ask me all the time, what web browser do I use? I'm only going to talk to, talk about it now. I'm never going to talk about it again. I use whatever web browser is on the system by default, which means that I'm on a Pop! OS system. I'm using uh, Firefox, which comes with it. Uh, I use I, I use Chrome on occasion and turn this stuff off of it. I use Brave for a long time. Uh, despite the controversy, I'd rather not talk a lot about browser wars right now. Uh, actually, believe it or not, I actually kind of like Edge. I've been using Edge at work, uh, which has got a Chromium base. Um, that's way too much information for this intro. Just use whatever browser you want. Just make sure, bottom line, I don't use a graphic browser very much at all. I use a text-based browser, which we're going to get into, and therefore I don't care about my graphic browser because I've done all of the, the you know, privacy violating things that, you know, the tracking is impossible because I'm doing a text browser for that. And then when I get to the actual page I want to see, if there's something graphic on it that I can't see through text, then I pull that page up and I, I bypass all of the concerns that most people have for browsers being spied on and all that other stuff. There's no cookies or anything in a text-based browser. So the, my selection of a text of a, of a graphic browser does not matter as much as it does to other people. All right. Um, where are we? We got... <laughs> we got that. We have, um, okay, you should understand basic network concepts and usage, okay? Uh, we are going to briefly touch on, you know, what's an IP address, but you should know about a URL is. You should know, you know, what lag is. You should know what a ping time is in general. Uh, you should have a general concept of, of how to connect to, to the internet, uh, Wi-Fi, things like that. We're not going to teach you the basics of how to use a network. Um, uh, you really should learn that on your own, though. Um, I mean, you should learn how to connect your computer to your Wi-Fi and how to connect your computer maybe through a cable. That is on you to learn how to do that. Uh, we will talk about how the packets fly around and everything and kind of explain some of that. But we're not, I'm not going to tell you, we're not going to go over how to connect your computer to your Wi-Fi, right? So that's assumed. Um, and that's all. That's all we have for those are all the only technical prerequisites. Um, does anybody else have any any suggestions on the technical prerequisites before we close up this video? Um, yeah, it's all funny games to tell you can't log in. Ain't that the truth? And you know what? It happened to me the other day too. I was logging in to do my hours on PeopleSoft, and I tried for an hour and a half reset my password two times, and called into the help desk and found out that they had an outage on the whole system. Oh yeah, no one can log in. I'm like, really? You think you could have put a notification on there instead of wasting an hour of my Saturday? <laughs> I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed by that. All right, that's the end of that video.